All right, here we go. We're going to do three angle bisectors, and they meet at a point called the N center, somewhat similar to the circum center. Circum means to go around the outside of a triangle. N center obviously means to stay inside a triangle. So instead of our circle at the very end going outside the triangle, we're going to have a circle staying inside the triangle. It's going to look something like this. All right, so three angle bisectors in the center. Got our compass ready to go. Haven't done angle bisectors in a while, so a quick review. We put our pivot point on the vertex. We draw an arc that intersects both sides of the angle. And we have a point of intersection here. We do not use the end of the arc. We use the point of intersection here. And we also use the point of intersection here for our next arcs. So draw an arc, draw another arc. And where they intersect, we're going to line that up with our vertex. Got this right here. Lined up with this right here. I'm going to draw all the way through my triangle and out the other side. And I draw a ray. Remember that an angle bisector is a ray. It does not need to be perpendicular here. It does not need to bisect this side. The only thing it has to do is bisect this angle down here. And now we're going to do another angle. So we can change our compass length if we want to. It doesn't really matter. Just to show you, we can. Draw my first arc. And I'm going to draw my second arc. Now, sometimes if that's in the same general spot as this one, it can be a little confusing. So we can change our, our compass now if we really want to. So I'm going to change that so that the arc goes out here somewhere, the point of intersection we're aiming for. So first arc, second arc, all right. Take our point of intersection and our vertex, line them up. And we're going to draw all the way through the triangle and put a ray on the end. Show you that's an angle bisector. They have to be rays. Again, it does not need to bisect this side. It does not need to be perpendicular here. All we care about is two congruent angles back here. We have one more angle to do. So I'm going to probably keep my work a little closer this time just to keep out of this mess that's going on there. So I'm going to make my compass smaller. So on my vertex. Okay. We can change it if we want to. We don't really need to. Okay, I'm going to keep it small. Just keep it out of the way of the other stuff. Okay, so I have my point of intersection right here. I line that up with my vertex here. And hopefully, I end up going through that point out there. If I don't, I have a problem. All right, so I'm aiming right there, aiming right here. And hopefully, it's going to go through that point out there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So we have a single point. Point is called the end center. Okay, it is where the three angle bisectors of our triangle meet. Okay, in inside. It is always inside a triangle. It does not matter what kind of triangle we have. It does not matter whether that triangle is acute, like this one. It could be obtuse. Obtuse is a little harder to draw, but not not that hard. Uh, right triangle doesn't matter. It's always going to be inside. The next thing is we have what's called an inscribed circle. An inscribed circle is a circle that stays inside my triangle. It's going to touch every side exactly once. That can be somewhat difficult to do, so I'm going to show you how to draw that. What happens is that we want to set our compass up from here, not... This is the most common mistake people make. They line their compass up with our end center and this point of intersection right out here. But that's not what we want. What we actually want is we want our point uh, from the end center out to our uh, edge of our triangle. We want that to be a perpendicular distance. And our shortest distance from a point out to a side is perpendicular distance. 
So I'm going to head from here out to there, all right? But I don't really know where perpendicular is. Same thing I've got going on here. That's not quite perpendicular. Perpendicular is a little more over here. This one might be perpendicular, but it might be a little bit off. But we don't want to guess at it. So if you remember, we've done this before. If I have a line and a point not on that line, there's exactly one line that goes from this point through this line, and it's perpendicular to that line. And the way we did that is we did the smile and the chin. So we're going to do one more piece of compass work on this. I've got this. I need it wide enough. Okay. Wide enough to hit this side twice. Okay. We've done this before. So got my compass. It's ready to go. Crank it down just a tiny bit. Okay. So I've got my compass. Here we go. Pivot is on the end center. I'm going to come out here and make the smile so it hits this side twice. Okay, see that? That's the smile we've used before. Now from that point of intersection and that point of intersection, I'm gonna make a chin down here. We've done that before as well. Okay, so pivot point here, arc here. Come over here and do the same thing to this other one. Pivot point right there, arc. Okay, so that connected back to my end center is going to show me a perpendicular distance. A okay, perpendicular distance is what we want. So from here to here, that's perpendicular. I'm just going to kind of draw it as a dotted line so you can see the difference between this and the rest of the compass work that we actually did for the end center itself. Okay, now that distance is the perpendicular distance from the end center to one side. It should be the same no matter which side I pick if we did this correctly. So I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to line this up so that the pencil is right where this dotted line meets this side. I'm a tiny bit too long right now, so let me come in a little bit. Okay, pivot here, pencil right there. You can see that? Okay, now if I just turn this, you can see that that's basically the same right there. I may be a tiny bit off. End center is a pretty tough one to do sometimes. I come here looks pretty good as well. I may be a tiny bit off again. Let me double check to make sure I have this measured correctly. Looks like I'm actually a little wide, so I'm going to come in a tiny bit. Okay, so pivot point on in center. Pencil on the side where that dotted line, the perpendicular line hit. And I'm going to draw a circle that is inside my triangle. It went a tiny bit outside here and here. Um, in center can be difficult to do at times. So I have some kind of mistake, uh, maybe uh, maybe I just had my compass a little bit too wide as I drew the circle, or maybe it changed a tiny bit as I drew it, but you can see the end center, uh, the inscribed circle is inside, it's supposed to touch every side exactly once, a little bit questionable here and here, but it is good enough for what I'm going to ask you to do, I want you to be able to do this uh, pretty well, I understand that this part with uh, the perpendicular and getting that can be pretty difficult. So. Angle bisectors. Okay, remember arc, two more arcs, draw through with your ray. Okay, arc, two more arcs, draw through with your ray until we get all three done. We have our smile on our chin to get the dotted line for a perpendicular distance, then we draw our circle. So three angle bisectors, they meet at a point called the end center. It's the first thing you need to know about the end center. It's the one point where the three angle bisectors meet. It is always inside the triangle. It is the center of the inscribed circle and it is the same perpendicular distance. So if we draw this perpendicular, this distance right here, if I come out here, perpendicular as well, that distance should be the same as that. And if I come out here perpendicular, right there, that distance, those three distances all have to be equal. So I'll repeat that stuff. End center, it's the one point where the three angle bisectors meet. It is always inside the triangle. It's the center of the inscribed circle, and it's the same perpendicular distance to the three sides of the triangle.